Hi, this is Muho again from Osaka. Um, I received a couple of questions from Egypt and today I want to get to the second question, which runs as follows. What is the Zen attitude towards making distinctions? And I mean that on a very fundamental level. Because often we say Zen is not dualism, it's about making no distinctions. So how does Zen deal with making distinctions? For example, it seems in Zen there's a lot of talk about how life is eventually meaningless and is all nothing. And even Master Kodo Sawaki said that when he looked back on his life, he saw that it could have been anything other than a Zen master. And I think he gave the example of being a miner who drank sake after work. But is it really the same? Um, I remember that miner story that at uh, one point uh, Sawaki Roshi had the opportunity to visit I think it was a coal mine during the war and uh, they went down this uh, deep pit in an elevator and at first Sawaki felt that he was going down but then while taking this ride and it was completely dark he wasn't uh, aware anymore am I going upwards or downwards and then he shown the, sh uh, he shown the light yet this this headlight uh, and when he saw the wall moving upward, he realized, okay, I'm going downward. And uh, that's the only story connected to Sawaki Roshi um, that would somehow connect him to, to a mine. I don't remember him saying that he could have become a miner. And what he wanted to say uh, with this story is that uh, often in, in life we say, oh, it's going in a good way or in a bad way. Uh, things are coming my way or uh, life is a drag. Uh, it's basically that we are comp making this kind of almost, uh, well, deliberate comparison with something that's, that's really not real. And when we stop making this comparison, all of this, oh, it's going a good way, it's going a bad way, it's basically meaningless. It's our life, most of the time, is like you're taking a ride in an elevator and actually there's no way to tell if you're going up or going down. Maybe the elevator isn't moving at all, who knows. Um, but what Sawaki Roshi actually did say is that if he hadn't encountered Zen, but just followed his karma, so to speak, then he would probably have ended up like uh, his relatives who were kind of gamblers or uh, his foster mother was an ex-prostitute. And he said, well, I might have become a Yakuza. But uh, he never said that that would have been the same. So I don't remember uh, Sawaki being a kind of nihilist who says, well, it doesn't really matter if I became a Zen master or a Yakuza, it would have been the same. I don't think he said that. Um, whatever. Uh, is it really the same? Of course it's not the same. Dogen Zenji also said to put high things in high places and low things in low places. That's a quote from the Tenzo Kyokun, the instructions from the cook. So put things that belong on a high shelf, on a high shelf, and things that are better in a low shelf, place them there. And it continues that things in a high shelf are level on the high shelf. Things on the low shelf are level on the low shelf. So equality doesn't mean that everything is on the same level. Equality means that everything is in exact the spot where it belongs. And that in real life and in society is of course a difficult koan. What does that mean? What does that mean? Should everybody wear the same fashion 
and do the same kind of work, get the same kind of education, or do women get a women's education and men get a men's education? And we all know, well, it should mean that we all have the same opportunity. But what does it really mean to have the same opportunity? If you're born in a rich family, right from the start, you don't have the same opportunity than you're born in the poor family. So what does it mean uh, that things in a high place go in a high place and they're on an e even level there and things in a low place, they go in a low place and they're even there. What does it mean? Good question. And Dogen also said in the Fukan Sasengi, is Fukan Sasengi, that if there is a slight distinction made, the mind becomes lost in confusion and the gap between heaven and earth only gets bigger. He says something like that in the beginning of the Fukan Sasengi. Um, you can find the text, for example, on the homepage of Antaiji. He also says that uh, when you sit, you let go of good and bad. You let go of all distinctions when you do Zazen. But then when you're in the kitchen, uh, another quote from the Tenzo Kyokun is uh, when you're cooking in the kitchen, you should take care that you don't lose one eye or both eyes. And what does that mean? When the Tenzo takes care to not lose one eye. That means that uh, he's not losing that view, that standpoint, the absolute standpoint, the so-called absolute standpoint. From there and from that standpoint there are no distinctions. It's not about delicious against not delicious. Um, There are no distinctions from the absolute perspective. All is one. There's only this one moment, this one activity. The activity of the universe manifesting right now when the cook is cooking in the kitchen. There's not me sacrificing myself for the others. Uh, there's no good quality food against bad quality food. But then Dogen Zenji also says don't lose both eyes. That means don't lose your ability to make distinctions. In summer try to uh, serve cold food that's refreshing to the monks. In winter it should be as hot as possible so that they can stay warm. And of course you should try to make the best out of the materials you have. So if there's a choice between delicious or not so delicious cooking, of course you should try to make it delicious. So don't use non-distinction as an excuse uh, to not care about what you do. So in Zen it's often said that uh, well, form is emptiness, emptiness is form. In the realm of emptiness there are no distinctions, in the realm of form there are distinctions. A triangle is not the same as a square, and the square is not the same as a circle, and if you can't tell the difference you're a fool. But if you make preferences, for example, I want to get out of samsara, I want to reach nirvana, you're already in samsara. So. In Zen you need both and I don't know about any logical really satisfying explanation of how these both these two truths the absolute truth of no distinction and the relative truth that there is distinction how they really how do you say fit together in a perfect way but all of the Zen masters, including uh, Dogen Zenji, Koto Sawaki, Uchiyama, will tell you, you need both. You will need both. You need to be able to make distinctions, but you don't, or you must not be attached to distinctions. You also have to realize that all is one, but inside oneness, 
in Japanese there's this uh, exp uh, expression that Uchiyama uses, kuso, miso. Kuso means, well miso, miso is the soup or the paste from which you make miso soup and kuso means shit. And they kind of look, look similar, kind of brown substance. Uh, but uh, if you're the cook, even everything is one and the miso you eat will eventually become kuso. When you're cooking, you should know the difference. But uh, the question continues a little bit. I see that in myself, if I don't make distinctions while living, I live like an animal. But I also see that when I make distinctions, my mind becomes rigid and fixed, which itself becomes a cause of suffering. How should we make distinctions if it is all really nothing in the end? <clears throat> Good question. That's a big koan. Uh, actually, when you do koan practice, um, at the end of the practice, there's these five goi, how do you say, five level so to speak how the absolute and the relative interact with each other mm. but uh, the only thing I can tell you right now is you need both the ability to make distinctions and freedom freedom from distinctions both are essential thank you and I'll get to the third question next week see you